Hey everybody, I am excited to host this chat today with Lindsay Moss, who should be joining us shortly. But as we're allowing people into the chat and you, as you guys are joining us, why don't you share maybe where you are right now and if you happen to know what your situation is for next year. Now, we're of course going to talk about um, art on a cart, but um, we know that everybody's situation is very different right now. If you do not know me, I am Sarah Krajewski. I'm a writer. Um, I'm an art teacher. I write for the Art of Education and um, I'm super excited to give you guys some conversation that you can have um, or watch or chat with us a little bit with Lindsay. So it looks like she's ready to join us right now. And come on in, Lindsay. And she should be here soon. Just wait, guys. This is It's like the suspense. Well, okay, once we once she gets in here, we'll talk a little bit about how um, how we are going to tackle Art in a Cart. So I'm gonna give her a second to get into the chat, but um, what I wanted to tell you guys was the fact that certainly many of us are up in the air right now, right? There is not a lot of answers. Um, there aren't very many answers and we probably won't get answers for a while. So those of you that are teaching in elementary, we know that being a mobile art room, being art on a cart is a definite possibility. Um, and we want to be able to tackle that with the best of our ability. Now, um, I know that we all kind of have our own feelings about what um, next year might look like. Sorry, it looks like her connection's a little bit slow, so we'll just see if we can get her in there in just a second here. Come on. Try again. Okay, we'll see if we can get Lindsay in here. But what I wanted to remind you, um, aside from how you feel, there is, a, there is a chance that you might have to do art on a cart, um, even if it's maybe not your favorite thing. So, or maybe you are feeling nervous about returning back to school, whatever your feelings are. Today, we're really just talking about the logistics of what art on a cart looks like and what it might um, be and what it might come down to when you might have to actually take those steps in your classroom or mobily moving. So as we're waiting for Lindsay to join, if you guys could just give me a little comment about where you're at, maybe what quick questions you have, and what um, what might be happening for you for next year. So it looks like we've got a lot of friends, Michigan, Texas. I know, Abby, I'm really excited for Lindsay to join. I don't know what to do if she can't join. She needs to like go somewhere with good internet. So I'm not sure. But Let's see. I'll try one more time here. Guys, this is very exciting. <laughs> I mean, it's not, but it is. Okay, it looks like I'll be on a schools. Ooh, yes, 650 kids per week. That's from Leah. Um, last I heard, I'm in my room, but want to be prepared? Absolutely. Some friends from Texas. Um, not sure. Yeah, I mean, it really sounds like a lot of us are we don't know, right? And that's where I'm kind of at too, is I'm not sure what it's going to be next year, but there's obviously a conversation that Art on a Cart is a real possibility. So um, that is probably what I'll be doing. And it seems like what a lot of us will be doing. Even if maybe you return back to school um, virtually at the beginning, there is a chance that when you are able to go back in person that you um, might, might be on a cart then. So um, I... I am going to keep checking, you guys. This is, yes, we will be, ideally, if she can get in, we'll be recording this for later and saving it. But now the technical difficulties are really exciting. Oh, let's see. Yay, Gwen <laughs> Lindsay! Yes! Oh my God, it's a miracle! We did it! That was the most thrilling wait like a buildup that we've ever had i'm so glad you're here i'm so sorry to stress you out i'm not an that i was like request 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 it happens you well, you got in where it's super excited okay so let's start a little bit Lindsay. can you just tell us kind of your background specifically as an art educator how did your year go and then um your experience with art on a cart sure okay so hi everybody i've got a couple friends i know that tuned in today so if you don't know me already. Um, my name is Lindsay Moss, and um, I work in Yorkville, Illinois, which is a suburb far west of Chicago, um, kind of where the suburbs stop and the corn starts. Um, and I have been, 
I don't want to say how long I've been teaching because it's a while. It's, it's, it was, it's 16 years this year, I think. Um, it's a while. And I've been in the same district the whole time, um, elementary through and through. I teach K-6. Um, and then I also work for the Art of Ed part-time. Like, I used to be a writer like Sarah is, and now I just kind of help behind, behind the scenes with whatever they need, which is fun. Um, and like everybody here, this has been a trying year for me. Um, I know you're all in the exact same boat. And um, Sarah invited me on to talk today because I have some cart experience. So long ago in another life, um, this was like pre-recession, right? Um, I was in an area where there was a lot of building and we just ran out of classrooms, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so for that period of time, I was on a cart at a couple schools. And it's so funny because everybody lately is like asking me, Lindsay, how long were you on a cart? And I was like, oh, I think it was like two or three years. And then um, my good friend, Jamie, who was my teaching partner, that she was like, Lindsay, it was one year. But it, <laughs> felt, it felt like a really long time. Yep, um, yep. And so, you know, this year we're back to it. So I'm excited to kind of share, like, you know, anything I can, because I think we're all just in the scramble trying to survive this right now. So absolutely. Yeah. So um, thank you for that background a little bit about you. And I mean, as you can share, time is like, what is time right now? So like, was it a year when you were in a car? Was it more than that? I mean, I feel like we've all had that feeling where we're like, what day is it? And how long has this been happening? So I, I fully understand. So um, let's just talk a little bit about like, when you're actually on a cart, what do you feel like are the key sort of bullet points, the key things that you want to encourage us to remember? If you're sure. on a cart, what do we need to know? Sure. Okay, there's like so much to share. I hope I can fit it fit it all in here. But like some main points um, that I think are going to carry me through the year are number one, uh, you must be highly organized and detail oriented, which is not my personality by itself. So that's got to be like a transformation for me this year. Mm -hmm. um, you always need to have a plan B. I think sometimes we take for granted how much we call an audible, like yeah. in our classroom, like something's not working and you're like, oh, let's just do this instead. Or, and you don't have that luxury anymore. So um, when you're planning, you're always planning for the main activity or the main lesson, but you got something on the back burner when something goes wrong. Yep. Um, the third thing, and this might be specific to me because I'm kind of tech challenged, as you know, from my late entry. <laughs> Um, when you are not in your own classroom, there is always a tech thing that comes up. Like if yeah. you're trying to connect your laptop or your whatever um, in another teacher's classroom. So I always like to have a non-tech alternative to what I was going to do. Like if you were going to give them a PowerPoint, you got to be ready to do something else when that doesn't work. Yep. Um, and then the last thing I think is to have a positive attitude about it, which I know is really easy to say right now. Um, but it matters to our kids, right? Like, I just think about all these kids I know and love that have been stuck at their homes for so long, right? And um, they're coming back in a lot of places, Max are involved in a lot of places, they're scared. If you're coming on the cart, they probably are doing all of their schooling in one room. Um, so art is even more important than it ever was before. They've been waiting all day to see you, right? Yeah. Um, let's make it count, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. And, and I think we'll talk a little bit more about how we can kind of encourage each other with positive attitudes, but really making that part of like your supply list, essentially, as an art teacher, what do you need for your lessons, but also like, what are you going to be as an educator to be strong and there for your students. So um, and, and the all of the hints that you reminded us of those plan B's and things too, we already do naturally as art teachers, but you have to just kind of reframe your brain a little bit to think about the fact that when you don't have access to you, oh, I can just grab these supplies or I can just turn on this video or whatever. What what right. are your alternatives that you can do within a different space? So I love that that um, you can kind of have a list of other alternatives. Um, so kind of brings me to my next question. As far as the actual physical setup of your cart, um, I know there's there's a lot of options and some super complex, some that are really, really simple. Can you tell us specifically what your cart looked like or some suggestions about what you thought were um, mm -hmm. helpful or what students have access to? So just give us a little bit of like your, your cart jam. 
the, the low down on the cart. Okay. Yes. So, um, when I did this before, uh, my district let me pick out a cart and I got like, you know, the cart with all the bells and whistles. It was like gray and it had like a push handle. And I'm like, it was, it was cool looking. Mm -hmm. um, and I pretty quickly that that might not be the best cart. The larger it is, the harder it is to move it. Sure. Um, and I think also a cart you might normally want for on a cart is maybe not the cart for this situation. Mm -hmm. um, one that I am asking for is actually an AV cart. It's a black AV cart. They're on Amazon. It's got three um, shelves. I like it because it's lightweight and it's smaller because then I can fit in between desks. I can fit up and right. down elevators because we're a two floor building. Um, it doesn't have to, like the one I had was really cool, but because it was large, it wouldn't turn. Mm. Um, I think that the cart that you pick is kind of contingent on your supply situation. Um, because, um, I know in my district anyway, we are going no shared supplies, yep. right? Um, and so that kind of transforms the usage of the cart because then the cart is really more about teacher resources. It's where you're keeping your lesson plan book. It's where you're keeping the children's books you're using. It's where you're keeping your samples. It's where your laptop is um, and those types of things. Because in my situation, we are going no shared supplies. So I am only able to use what are in a kid's desks at that point. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going with the AV cart. It's a little bit smaller. I saw somebody in the chat put something about all four wheels being able to rotate. Yes, friend. That is yes. really important. because Then you can counter it right away. Um, so, yeah, that's the cart I'm going to ask for. Um, and again, you know, like you could get a bigger one. But in this case, and I don't know if this applies to everybody, you, you don't want to be hauling student supplies because you want them not to be sharing. So, Right, right. Um, I love that too. And it's, I mean, as someone that's never been on a cart before, it's sort of the, like, I think I have a vision of this, like, big, beautiful cart that has all these bells and whistles. But it's like, you're right, being able to just like quickly move in between desks is really important, or like the ability to turn around, like the actual logistics of how the cart works is something to think about, too. So I appreciate that as well. And um, so just to answer your questions um, below, somebody said, what's the name of the cardian? So again, to reiterate, it's that AV cards, usually what like a projector or something is on, usually in between yeah. desks. Um, so that is super helpful. And then we did have a couple questions, which we can kind of just talk a little bit about. And I know every school is going to be different, Lindsay, but mm -hmm. I know this is a huge, huge concern for many art educators is literally just the sharing of supplies. So you said that you won't be doing any shared supplies for your district, yeah. which is obviously mm -hmm. a great plan you know, if, if it can be um, managed properly. But do you have any um, suggestions on what that's going to look like for for your um, district? Or um, even just to kind of answer one of the questions, uh, I was chatting with uh, another, she's actually an art therapist who works mm -hmm. in a hospital. And so she travels to patients' rooms and does art therapy with individual students. And so she obviously has to have a very clean environment. And what she does mm -hmm. is that she like literally sanitizes everything in between patients, but she has like a, a bin, like a covered bin for things that need to be sanitized and then um, a bin of things that, that, that can be used. So keeping like mm -hmm. almost like a yeah. dirty bin can be really interesting. So you can keep track of like, these weren't touched by students. These are things that need to be sanitized can be really helpful. But can you speak a little bit to that conversation, how you'll be handling that or what is expected of your students? Sure. Okay, so here's what I did. Like we kind of saw the writing on the wall um, in the spring and kind of saw, okay, this is coming down the pike. This is going to be a problem. So um, what we did is we got a copy of the back to school school supply list for our district. Um, mm -hmm. I know not all districts, some districts they provide the supplies, but in our district, kids buy school supplies and bring them to school, right? Yep. Um, so then we went through that list and identified the super bare bones things that you would need for an art program. So um, things like markers, crayons, colored pencils, scissors, glue, glue stick, I won't get into the adhesive debate, but you know, uh -huh. and, um, and then we looked at across the grade levels, who was asking for those and anywhere, anytime there was a hole, like some, maybe a certain grade level wasn't asking for colored pencils, we asked for it to be on the list. Um, and then we identified outside of those two things, if we could have any two things, it would be watercolors and oil pastel. So, um, 
as a family in my district looking at the back to school school supply list, it looks for all intents and purposes like it has in the past, right? Mm -hmm. yep. They usually ask for markers and crayons for their classroom, right? Um, so in this case, those are also being used in the classroom for art. Um, and we plan to ask everybody to put it into a large Ziploc bag. Um, because if we do phase into e-learning again, we're going to require everyone to take that bag home. So we're not dealing with the same um, types of supply shortages or crazy, like who has what. Right. Um, two, hi two hiccups in this great plan so far. Um, number one, where we are at least, not a lot of stores stock or stock oil pastels. So that I, I can already foresee we're going to have some families who aren't able to get that. Um, and then number two, from my own budget, um, I am searching out the Walmart, the Target for the super cheap versions of these things for equity reasons, because there are going to be kids who normally don't have all quite all the school supplies and a teacher absorbs that. Normally a classroom teacher takes care of that. Well, I don't want my art room to be stressful for those kids. So I plan when I see the markers are on sale for a buck, I'm, I'm getting a bunch of packs for those kids who won't have them because um, right. everybody needs to have art, even in a pandemic, right? So yeah. um, that what we had the advantage of being able to get that on the school supply list. But I think a lot of people are looking at these kits and they're thinking they need to buy everything for their kids. Look at your school supply list. They may already have like two thirds of what you needed right. that they're good to bring. And so in that case, you're just trying to fill in those gaps like oil pastels, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe providing for your lowest income kids. Yeah. So that's absolutely. how I'm approaching it. And I think, I think that's important too, because as art educators and teachers, obviously we have students and schools and situations that are completely different. We're all over the board. So um, it really depends on what your school district is able to do. But know that yeah. one of our biggest attributes as art teachers is our flexibility and our ability to be creative. So maybe, you know, maybe like this is the year where you're like, we are going to explore what we can do with pencils and paper, baby. Like what are we, you know? So uh, sometimes limitations, as much as it feels like a, um, a negative thing, it can be really a beautiful way to explore your creativity. So really trying to encourage that positive attitude. Um, and just to, to check in the chat, you know, here, since we've got a lot of awesome people following us um, in this conversation, we have had a couple of questions about like logistics, again, about that cart, about drying rack and things like that too. So, um, yeah. certainly like maybe painting projects take a break. Otherwise, um, something that I was just thinking of is, you know, how we always want our projects to like lay flat, but sometimes they dry so quickly you can actually hang them. So some friends said like magneting them to a board, maybe like taping them off the edge of a desk. Um, I know Abby said she uses like one of those file folder separators. Um, you can do, uh, what did I, what else did I see? Some, somebody said like S clips that you like a little metal clip that you can clip onto either like your drying rack or, um, or like if you have a rolly drying rack, I mean, maybe it's time to like, and in, just invest in some, some rollers and stick them on your drying rack and have a kid or I don't know if a kid can carry it. Anyways. So do you have any suggestions about logistics of like drying rack or painting or those things? Like yeah. Okay. So, um, first of all, like, you know, some people have access to water, um, in mm. classrooms, some things have sinks. That's not always the case. So, um, yeah. what I would recommend is start buying your laundry detergent this size. Um, these are the giant tie bottles and this one's still sticky. Sorry, I got it from my laundry room so I could show you. But um you rinse it out, you put the water in here and then you have a dispensing here and obviously you're gonna want like a dollar store bucket under it because there's kids who are just gonna push it, right? Um, but you could also dispense this yourself as a teacher, but this is a great way to have water ready to go to pour yeah. into little two cups or whatever. Um talking about the the drying rack, um I have drying racks that are on casters, so I plan to pre-move them to yeah. the second floor. So I'll already have some racks on the second floor and the first floor. But I think a solution to some of these things um, is is not always in, like, um, buying new stuff, but flexibly scheduling. So, yeah. like, let's say that you normally do the same project with all of your third graders at the same time. You don't have the ability to have drying racks for that many classes now. So what if you have like a rotation of projects going? So you only have one class painting one week and that way you have enough drying racks and you're not um, concerned about that. That's um, also what I plan to do with clay. Um, I'm still going to try clay. I might come back and tell you in a few months that 
it, it drove me to insanity. But I am going to try some one day clay projects. And I'm going to accomplish that by flexibly scheduling. Like if, for example, you have um, class A and class B, if you yeah. have the relationships where you can talk to teacher B and say, I'm going to stay in class A double this week. And then next week, I'll visit you for double. So they trade off and get a larger block. If you have those kinds of professional relationships, all of a sudden, you can um, open up a block of time that removes the problem of not being in the art room and you could do a one day clay project. So that is, um, that's, you know, what I'm going to do. And I, I, heck, we're still going to try to paint, although not at first, we have to give ourselves some grace. And yeah. um, at the beginning of my school year, I'm not going to tackle paint or clay until I've really got my feet under me. Um, Yes. And we've gone through enough laundry detergent, right? <laughs> well, there's that. There's that component a little bit. So kind of speaking to that, next I'm going to ask you about your curriculum and how you sort of plan. You're, you're going to think a little bit about your plans of what your, I don't know if you thought about your entire year, but what your curriculum might look like and what your projects might be. Um, but I did also have um, that, that cart conversation about, let's say you have five classes a day that you're going to see. Um, and of course, this is this varies for every teacher. But the the assumption would be it would be nice to use the same materials or similar materials for each class you can kind of load up your cart and go from there but yeah. um that also is tricky if you're doing painting if, if you're doing something that is a little bit more um, material based and you have a lot of things that you need to bring to that group that it would be nice to do different projects with different grade levels because then you can split the materials um do you have any suggestions for like do you load up multiple carts do you like prep spaces within your art room or or somewhere where you can kind of like grab each class at a time what does that look like to help us with with that planning sure okay so i won't have that supply issue because they are all using their own supplies in the classroom but um, I do still have the artwork storage issue, which is maybe a solution to what you're asking about. Um, I learned pretty quickly when I was on the cart before that the best way to mess up a lesson was by missing a kid's artwork mm. and or having an artwork in process somehow it got lost in the shuffle. And the best way to avoid that is not taking it out of the room. So yeah. I have a large Sterilite tub that I put in each classroom and classroom teachers are just going to have to be flexible about finding a little corner to put that in. And that's where artwork goes in between class. Yeah. Now, if you were a person who was going to do um, supplies that get carried from room to room, I think like, you know, those cardboard lids that you get fruit or vegetables in at the store yeah. are a great for Sterilite tubs. If you want to be fancy, you could at the beginning of the day preload everything you needed for the project and just have it waiting in the hall so you can grab it. Oh, um, sure. But I, I've already got 25 of those tubs that I'm going to use for classes. I'm going to need to get a couple more. But that way, the artwork um, never leaves. Right. Because yeah. if you missing a kid's art project for some reason, you can't go get it. Um, so having it in the classroom works. And then also, I mean, we, we're just talking about regular curriculum, not our normal mode of operation stuff that is added onto that, like early finishers, these other things. So I'm going to keep sketchbooks in that tub too. So yeah. that way everything is in the classroom ready to go. And so, yeah. um, Yeah. And that kind of speaks to your point too about like always being prepared with a plan B. So what, what do sketchbooks look like? How do we encourage prompts or um, kind of that brainstorming that sense of creativity, mm -hmm. even though they're not in, in the normal space? Um, what does that look like too? So I think that's really smart. And, um, you know, just really setting a, an understanding between teachers about what kind of um, what things might need to change a little bit, you know, maybe I'll need to take a part of your counter with an art bin and that's okay because mm -hmm. things are different and we can be flexible and understanding. So um, I know you and I are going to be chatting a little bit about um, art on a cart too, and I'll have an article coming out and we're hoping to have something kind of helpful to really encourage that positive dialogue between art teacher and colleague to make sure that you've yeah. got kind of your like set of rules for what, how you speak to each other, how you are within another person's space so that you can feel like you're really being um, respectful of each other there too. So, um, okay, cool. So that makes sense as far as kind of what your plans are a little bit too, and still what you'll be intending on doing. Um, speaking of yeah. being in, oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to say, like not to keep talking about plans, but I think everybody's thinking about what they're going to do for the fall. And um, I think I, like I'm kind of dividing it up in two ways for myself. One is like the short term immediate planning. Um, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. And the news has been so crazy. Right. Um, mm -hmm. 
I fully intend, you know, that first day back is always sort of like logistics and teaching procedures and stuff. Um, but I think my second lesson of the year is going to be everything I wish they'd known before we went digital. Yes. So how, how exactly is your seesaw going to work? How exactly does the Google Classroom work? Let's practice logging on. Let's take a picture of our art. Like how many people had kids who could not take a picture of their yeah. art? Yeah. An explicit lesson on that so that we don't get past the second week of school without that knowledge. Um, because I, how many times was I at home and I was like, man, if I was just in the I classroom, know, I, I just tell you. Yeah, exactly. That's what, that's what Abby spoke to last week too. It's, it's like, mm -hmm. if we have the ability to be in front of our kids, that's what we're there for is to teach them. So teach them right. what you expect them to do when mm -hmm when they maybe aren't in front of you um, or to give them ideas about how they could be creative when, when you're not there to help them. Okay. So that makes total sense. Teaching yeah. them the logistics of what you need to do. So you're talking about your short term plan and the second, yeah. you know, second class of the year. Do you have anything kind of like a uh, longer term, what you're planning to do with your yeah. students throughout the rest of the year? Yeah. So I have been looking kind of at the quarter of the semester because for me, it's just like too much for my brain to be thinking about the entire year right now. Um, but kind of what I started doing was going over my scope and sequence or lesson. If you don't have that, you can use your lesson plan book from last year and sort of like just taking a highlighter to everything that's like an issue. And sure. it's usually materials based, right? Yeah. Um, so I had some thoughts. I know I kind of mentioned before, I'm still going to try to tackle clay, but I'm going to do one day projects. So um, things like slam molds, um, pinch pots, uh, modified slab projects, things that can be one and done. Um, and I know y you spoke about the relationship with the classroom teacher. I feel like that is an opportunity to have some flexibility here to really uh, make some things work so that, like I said, you could have an extended period of time to try to get a clay project done, right? Yeah. Um, and then uh, printmaking, you know, I don't have the money for brayers for everybody. Um, so I'm going to be doing some alternative printmaking. I'm going to be doing marker prints on styrofoam. It's the same learning, right? They're still creating a plate. They're still, you know, dampening it with a Kleenex or whatever, and then making the print so that but markers and styrofoam, those can be supplies that are not shared. Um, another great one is have you ever seen those projects with carved gum erasers? We have like yep. a one inch, one inch. Yep. That there you go. There's another easy printmaking project that kids could still tackle. Um, painting. We asked for watercolors. So we're obviously going to do that. Um, temper and acrylic is harder, right? Because yeah. it requires shared brushes and stuff. Um, some ideas I've had though are like Q-tips, you know, um, that is not like the ideal art making tool, right? But it still allows kids to have an experience. And whether it's like a dot making technique or something else, I think we have to be flexible. Um, and then I think that there's ways to like rethink supplies we are already using. Um, like I'm working on a lesson for flex right now with crayons. Like, you know, you can dilute crayons with baby oil. You can pour a little baby oil on a plate and have them use a Q-tip and they can blend crayon beautifully. Like, or you draw, everybody knows you draw with markers and then you just use a wet paintbrush and it turns into watercolor paint. So it's like some ways for kids to be rethinking these supplies, um, but also speaks to equity because then when they're back at their house, if that happens again, all of a sudden they have supplies to do cool techniques, right? Yeah, yeah. I do feel though like um, there is like a time, and maybe this is just me being like a conspiracy theorist, but I feel like there is like a tiny danger in making everything work great while you're on the cart, right? Mm -hmm. Because I want to send the message that like, we don't need an art room, we're fantastic without it. So I am not planning to do absolutely everything, but I still want to give my kids like the best experience that they can. Yeah. Uh, but I do want administration and the community to see like, oh, we couldn't do that because so I don't think we have to figure everything out you know what I know I'm what saying? you're saying I know what you're okay. saying I hear okay. I hear, I'm reading between the lines yes as educators <laughs> if given the opportunity we would probably prefer to be in our classroom but we also love our students and love teaching them art and know that is more of a priority when you say why are you an art teacher is to give them that access and that safe space and that excitement for art and teaching and learning. But, but we want to be in our rooms, but we know that may not be, be a potential. Also, I've seen some really cool conversations in the chat about speaking about printmaking and some um, people said that you can, I think it was Abby who said you can use a spoon, like a brayer. So you don't necessarily, or even to like, I assume for like pressing, but there's other things that you can do besides um, using like, the 
consumable Additional, yeah. in your classroom? Like what can you use that they might already have access to or be within their desk or can limit colors a little bit more so that they can be pretty inventive with what that looks like for sure. Um, awesome. So I'm just checking to make sure we didn't see anything in the chat here too. Mm -hmm. So um, I know you spoke a little bit about what your cu curriculum is going to look like and what you're going to mm -hmm. have in your classrooms. Can you speak to how you have some tips about managing in a different space, right? Because as we know, yeah. um, like being able to do your own thing, like when I was chatting with Harold before and he talked about like doing your dance, right? When you're in your art room, you can do your thing, you know where your stuff is, you can go grab this, you can be you. But when you're in somebody else's space and multiple other people's space, that is mm -hmm. very different feeling. So can you talk to kind of managing what it feels like or suggestions about being in a different space? Sure. So that was like, I feel like the classroom management portion of that was the most shocking thing to me when I went onto the cart. Because in some cases, it super works to your advantage. Um, and then in some cases, the devil's in the details there, right? Yeah. Like, you're walking into somebody else's educational space. Normally, the kids, when they transition into your room, that's like their mental cue. She runs things different. This is how this goes in here. But if you are always injecting yourself into another room, you're kind of at the mercy of the classroom climate that the classroom teacher has developed. Yeah. In some cases, if they run a tight ship, it's awesome. And then in other cases, you come in and you feel like there is a weird vibe. <laughs> this is about to I'm scared. And uh -huh. sometimes when happen back to back because it's so it's just at the mercy of other staff members right um so I would say the way to combat that is by explicitly teaching routines the first day I would I mean like the first day everybody except my kindergartners has been in my art room before right and I would have the actual conversation we are not in the art room we all understand why here's how this is going to be your teacher's rules might be x y and z but during art this is what we're going to do um and I plan to laminate my classroom rules and get um those magnet clips so that I can put it up on the classroom so when I come in that'll go up every time to remind them I think if you haven't had a classroom management system before with like rewards and consequences, this is the time to make it because it's going to be a lot more difficult. I think the management component, right? Well, and mm -hmm. oh, even just kind of piggybacking off that a little bit, Lindsay, too, yeah. like speaking about laminating your rules and, and putting them in the classroom. I mean, yeah. there, there are things that we do as art teachers that might just come more naturally. And of course, it's easier to do within our own space. But think about the routines that you would already do in your space. Is there anything that makes sense to transition to that classroom? So again, like, um, like an, a volume chart, right? We've got our like art volume chart. So absolutely mm -hmm. silence. Or we always do like five minutes of mindful work time at the beginning. We're always quietly working for five minutes. And that's where you can kind of check in with students. So like yeah. those routines don't need to change if it's like, it's a movable routine, right? I don't need to be in the art room to do that. So what like little tricks can you do that's like a tiny version of your poster or, a, you know, a mini version of what you do in your classroom already that the kids will recognize or that they can easily relate to as well. So I love that. I think that's super, super helpful. Um, you too, like you, you and I have had so many conversations on mindfulness over the yeah. last you and I feel like a lot of those techniques are going to be really important here because anything you can do to trigger a kid like this is a different situation now that she's here um like whether that's you turn the lights off when you come in and play a song my that's what I plan to do I'm going to play a transitional song every time sort of like I on a that. It's the intro. yeah it's the intro to the sitcom song and I got yeah. my if you are not familiar, she's a folk singer. Her name is Kristen. I think the last name's Andreessen. Okay. And her song is Crayola Doesn't Make a Color for Your Eyes. Mm. Everybody go Google it. Best song. Do you know this song? Nope, but I'm going to Google it right after this. <laughs> it's fabulous. So anyway, um, that or like some other, I know, you know, there, like when I've been to your classroom, the singing bell or any of those things that's like us, maybe like a light change and a sound change to yeah. give kids. And that's a great transition for you, too, because you could they could know she's going to come in, play the song. I got all the songs on to get all this junk off my desk. Yep. She's going to get the laptop plugged in. And by the time the song's over, we are ready to make art. I you don't have to pick it. my song, but it is the best. But it 
it, it is, is the best yeah. one. No, I, I love it. And that's like the simplicity of a little trick, a little routine, something that you can do when you first see your students again, whether it's like that first day of actual school or you're virtual at the beginning, beginning and then you come in and see them. I mean, I think that it's kind of like the circadian rhythm of, of your school day. Like it's going to be off, yeah. right? Because they're if, if we're out on a cart, they're not going to be moving to the, the classroom. There's like that moment when they're standing outside your room and you get to smile and wave to them when they come in. It's not, yeah. it's not as um, simple and regimented as it usually would. So then you kind of have to create that, that feeling, that routine, yeah. um, and, and go from there. Okay, now they said, what's the name of the song again? And I think it's Crayola it's Doesn't Have a Color Up For Your Eyes. For your what does it make color for your eyes and if you if you hate it don't tell me it will break my heart it's my favorite i would song. never i'm sure it's beautiful <laughs> but i love it and i think like um i'm sure if we google it we'll be able to figure it out too um crayola doesn't have a color or crayola doesn't make a color for your eyes i know you're all very excited about this song so we'll google it hopefully we can share it too in in our stories but I'm sure there's a lot of other beautiful songs and maybe it's like there's a different song each week and they get to listen to what it is. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not Welcome to the Jungle, but like something mellow. You know? Yes, a little right. chill. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Okay, so I know we could talk about this all day because we have a lot of um, <laughs> like questions, right? And there's a lot to kind of talk about for it. But did you have yeah. any other... Um, tricks or hacks or things that you wanted to share about specifically being on a cart? Sure. Okay, so I think we covered some of them so far, but I can't overemphasize that relationship with the classroom teacher. If you don't have close relationships with the classroom teachers, now's the time to try to build that rapport because you're going to be in their space. And I think of it just like a college roommate. You can accidentally ruffle feathers mm. without even realizing it. Yeah. And you need to be able to have those conversations so that, you know, we get through it. But also, ideally, when you have a really good relationship with a classroom teacher, and you have forgotten something, they're like, Oh, here you go, go ahead and borrow this, you know? Yeah. Um, so that is key. And I think one way um, to foster that is to start with a letter or an email right at the start of the year that basically says that like, hey, I understand I'm going to be in your space. And I don't want to be the roommate with the loud music who leaves mm. dirty dishes. So can you please come tell me if something's not going right? I'm going to do my best to keep it clean. Um, also, by the way, I have this bin you need to put in the middle or in the corner of your room. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I think that that's really key to start off before the school year even starts to have that conversation with people so they kind of know what to expect and you also have an opportunity there I think to set up some guidelines like you could say I'm totally comfortable with you planning in the back of the room while I'm teaching or you could say you know what I feel real weird with another professional watching me do you all mind you know doing the teacher's lounge for the first couple weeks while I get my feet under me um and I think people are going through all of this together right now so if you ask for grace at the start it's a lot easier than fixing problems after they happen so I think like a letter for classroom teachers um I told you about my detergent dispensers for a while. I told you about keeping a bit in the classroom. That's pretty key. Um, gosh, I guess, I guess just that start small. Like there's so many logistical things just with getting around the school. I would really pick a first project that you are completely comfortable with either because you've taught it before or it uses very basic supplies yeah um, after you are successful with that then start building right um, yeah. give yourself nope. some breaks. yeah exactly no no need to overcomplicate things especially since every so many things will be new and different there's no there's no reason to make it harder for yourself than um than necessary so um a little bit again kind of speaking to that like encouraging those really good relationships between your colleagues right because that can be tricky and i love that um comparison you had between a college roommate because it does kind of feel like that you're like oh we're sort of living together but for a little bit and I hope I'm cool and whatever so it's kind of a, an interesting relationship that most of us haven't had before in that way um right. so I think that that is uh going to be really important so can you kind of talk to like how we can maintain that morale so this is maybe maintaining that relationship between your colleague but then also how are we going to help support each other as art teachers because as we know like you and I are having a positive conversation about it but like there's parts yeah. of this that we probably aren't gonna love but what can we do to really make sure that um, we're giving our kids the best opportunity mm -hmm. and that um, we're, we're supporting each other too as, as art educators. 
Right. Um, gosh, you know, like, I guess like in a, in a, like a very real moment here, I'm scared. Yeah. I am yep. I'm scared to go back. I'm scared to send my kids back. Um, that's where I'm at. But I also believe that our profession is, um, uniquely important to kids right now. Mm -hmm. Um, they can always catch up on math. They can always catch back up on the reading they miss, but their social emotional health um, is is essential, right? Yeah. And that's not to say that that is just our job um, because our job has so many facets to it, but we all know how therapeutic making is. Yeah, We all know how important making is. Um, and I, I just feel like there is a chance here to be that for a lot of kids. Um, but like, how do you keep yourself healthy in that? You know, I mean, like from a literal standpoint, I know I shared with you earlier, I have a, I have a couple of things I'm going to try for my own family from a literal health standpoint. We all plan to strip in the garage. I've got um, a plan for laundry baskets in the garage. As soon as we nice. get home from school, we're taking off all our school clothes, leaving them in the garage um, for me to launder. And we're alternating Shower schedule. Showers are now going to happen at 4.30 when we get home from school. It's yep. not a morning thing. So I'll be like a zombie all fall walking around in the morning without a shower. Uh-huh. But from a uh, a morale point for the kids, I think just seeing us and making art is really um, important. But I think it's also cool to get them involved in the things that maybe aren't so great for us because it makes it more fun. Like you could have them make like a, an art contest, like make the best license plate for the art teacher's cart. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. Yeah. Where I know Cassie Stevens got this great project with a mask that like folds open. We've all done those kinetic fold arts, but hers mm -hmm. is the face with or without the mask. Um, but then I think like, it's also having colleagues who get where you are having friends at work makes all the difference. Like when I was on a cart before, um, it was with my dear friend, Jamie, who might be here. Hi, Jamie. Um, <laughs> that, you know, like we found humor or solidarity going through it together. And I yeah. think like, um, you know, a lot of us are isolated in the sense that we're maybe the only art teacher at our building. But if you can find another art teacher online, or maybe it's your music teacher or PE teacher, because even though it's not the exact same set of circumstances, they're also being asked to be like flexible into a back bend the way we are right now. Yeah. Um, and like, just having somebody who gets that can can make all the difference. But I think also, I know when I get with a close friend like that, like I love to do like the, the pity party right now, like, Oh God. But I feel like it's most constructive if you can vent and then move on to like, here are some concrete solutions or, yep. or tell your friend, like, I don't know how to get my head wrapped around this. How would you do this? And then, um, and, and, and try to come up with solutions for kids, I guess. Yeah. And then I if there was ever a time to treat yourself, it's now. I mean, like, get the cuter mask, right? Get, like, the fun bloom for your lanyard. I like any small things that bring a little bit of joy into your life. Because, you know, we make the weather in our classrooms. When we're happy, kids are happy. And yeah. um, and it, that matters right now. 100%. I mean, if, if nothing else, I feel that's, that's the most important thing. I mean, kids, kids are already going to feel that something's different. It's going to be so obvious. So our, our goal is not to shy away from that necessarily, but to make it as beautiful and positive and accepting and as wonderful as it can be, because it hurts to feel hurt. So if you're scared and you're nervous, I mean, I don't want to go to class like that every day and I don't want to be in a classroom where I feel like that. So we need to kind of coach ourselves and train ourselves to be um, as strong as we can with our, our teacher community, with our other staff members, with the people around us. And I think mm -hmm. that is completely true. Lindsay, I love what you said about you make the weather within your, your room. And yes, maybe it's not our own art room. Maybe it's a cart, mm -hmm. but you're still, you're still creating that, that space and you're still creating that mm -hmm. environment for your students. So um, I think that is a, perfect way to put it as well. Um, can you tell us just one thing maybe that you're, I know you're, we're all nervous, but can you tell us like one thing you're looking forward to? Um, if, oh, if, like, oh yeah. One thing you're excited about. Oh yes, friends. Okay. So the thing I found, and maybe not everybody who's been on a cart has found this, but the thing I found is there is suddenly a very freeing amount of time when you're on a cart. Um, 
Be, let me tell you, because, you know, um, when you are in a classroom and have to leave, the kids have to help you with all the cleanup, right? So you aren't after school washing brushes and scraping that oil pastel somebody stepped on because it had to be taken care of during the school day. You're not maintaining stations in your classroom anymore. You're not redoing classroom bulletin boards. You're not updating classroom seating charts for your sub. All of that is off of your plate. And um, I think people are going to find that although being on a cart adds some weird stress and adds some organizational time up front, it is less time intensive. Yeah. So, I mean, find a book you're excited to read. Make some art for yourself. Um, the year that I was on a cart, I didn't have kids yet, and I got national board certified in a year. Now, don't all go out and do that because it's so stressful. And like, <laughs> basically, what I'm saying is, I suddenly have time for other things, and like, um, maybe be thinking about, yeah, we sacrifice these things we love, but there might be doors opening also this year for us. Yeah. And um, what what would you do with an extra two or three hours a week? I don't yeah. know. Something fabulous. Yeah. I yeah. love that too. It's the it's the gift of of time in a certain way, and also like bringing it full circle to the beginning when you said give yourself grace. Also knowing mm -hmm. that sometimes just time, like to take your walks and to read your book and to be as mentally strong as you can be in whatever regard, it doesn't mean you need to do some huge crazy task. It just means no. what's gonna be what's gonna make you feel good so you can be strong for your students. And I think that is. A, a great way to end. I know there were so many amazing questions, some friends asking us about, um, like, what do you do if, if water spills and whatever. And like, I always have an art towel in my classroom that's just like this nasty towel. So like, maybe you can bring something like that. But also there might be certain rules about like, can you use paper towels? You don't want to reuse something because of the germs. <laughs> so um, you might need to just have that conversation with the people, uh, like the teachers that are in your space. And I also love there was a question about like, do you get extra minutes in between traveling from uh, room to room? And of course that depends on, on the school or, you know, mm -hmm. kind of on the district. But I think mm -hmm. um, something else that Lindsay and I will be working on is making a little resource for you about like how you can start that letter um, with, with the people that you'll be pushing into their classrooms. So you know what to talk about, but part of it might be like, Hey, I might be a minute or two late and let's have that understanding that like I'm moving and, and, and that's okay. And, and we're not going to have like this kind of disgruntled thing. So part of it is just having like a social contract, but what's acceptable. So um, even if you don't have minutes in between, maybe that's just a conversation you have with the teachers to say, this is okay that, that I'm a little bit late and it's not intentional. It just, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Um, okay. So Lindsay, you had so many amazing things to say. Um, we will be sharing, um, I'll be doing an article about Art on Our Cart um, shortly, as well as a handout with Lindsay that we're going to put together about communicating with your classroom teachers. But if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out on um, the Art of Ed, shoot a message. Abby will be sure to uh, make sure it gets answered. And we wanted to just thank you, Lindsay, for all of your insights. So many hints already. And I know that we can do this, whatever our situation is. We got this. We got it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Okay, well, we'll be saving this too so you can watch it again or share it with friends. And I hope y'all have a great day.